There's a saying throughout the New Testament, the stone that the builders rejected has become a cornerstone. Jesus said it to the Pharisees, Paul repeats it in the book of Ephesians, and even Peter talks about it in his first letter. But what does it really mean, and where does it come from? Jesus says it when he's being approached by the Pharisees, of basically saying, like, the person that you think is the Messiah isn't it. In fact, the Messiah is going to be a person that you're going to reject. But for you to really understand the phrase, you really need to understand where it comes from. In our reading today, we've read Psalm 118. It's kind of a lengthy psalm, so I'm not going to read the entire thing to you. But the psalmist begins by saying to give thanks to God for He is good. And then he begins to talk a little bit about Israel's history. He talks about Aaron and his descendants and their priestly line that goes on forever. And then he talks about the struggle that he has in following God, but how the Lord used him during that time. Overall, it's a really neat psalm. But then he says this in Psalm 118.22, The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. And when you read this psalm without any context of the New Testament, without a Christian mind, it's pretty evident to see that this is Israel. Now, Israel is not a nation that we should really know about, honestly. It's a nation that was born of slaves, like everyone in it were slaves. And we see that in the book of Exodus. They constantly were rebelling against God. They had enemies that would come down on them for all sides. They were destroyed completely, almost multiple times. Even in modern history, we look at what happened with the Jews in World War II. We really should not know about them, but God chose the Jewish people to be the cornerstone of the religious world. It's pretty incredible that he picks the person that I would pick last. We see a clear picture of this in Isaiah 28, 16. It says, therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I'm placing a foundation stone in Jerusalem, a firm and tested stone. It is a precious cornerstone that is safe to build on. Remember that the cornerstone would be the the side of the foundation. You pick this part of the foundation and everything on the house will be built upon this. Kind of like if you remove this, the whole house could collapse. It's needed for the structural integrity of the home. And God is saying that his cornerstone is going to be Jerusalem and Israel. He's picking the nation that I would pick last to be his chosen people. And in the same way, when Jesus steps on the scene, he's the person that you'd probably pick last. In Isaiah 53, it says there was no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was a carpenter's son. He wasn't educated. He did not have the resume to be the Messiah. However, that's who the Messiah actually is. It's the person that a lot of us would pick last, the cornerstone that we reject. And when Jesus or the other apostles are saying that Jesus is the cornerstone, that's a huge deal. They're saying that this thing that we've thought of for all of Israel, that the history, that we are the cornerstone as a nation, is not only about that, as it is in this psalm and then in the book of Isaiah, but it's also about what the Messiah is supposed to look like. They thought the Messiah would come riding in on a horse and kick out the Roman army and then take over the world, kind of like a picture of what David did and build a really strong empire when the Messiah came to kick out the real enemy, Satan, and then take over the world in his own timing. What I love about this verse is I think it applies to my life too. I am not qualified for the things that God is calling me to do. What? So ever. In fact, I think that if it wasn't for God, I would be the stone that many people would reject. But instead, he comes and picks me up out of the dust, cleans me off, and gives me a new purpose. Let me share with you a really neat story. When I go to Malawi, Africa, my favorite game to play with kids that's really easy and you don't need a translator to do it is I'll pick up a stone that would be about this size. This is a little USB drive. And I'll put it in my hand, put it behind my back move it to a different hand and I'll ask them to choose which one's it in, which one's it in. And they'll pick, they'll pick one and then I'll do it again and do it again. What's so incredible about this story is that when I went into this village, that stone had probably sat there for hundreds or thousands of years. But what did I do? I picked it up, I cleaned it off and I gave it a purpose. In the same way, God picked me up out of the dust, cleaned me off and gave me a purpose. And the stone that the builders rejected became 
the cornerstone. God, as Jesus, he didn't need to be picked up and cleaned off, and he's the foundation of the church. But it's a beautiful picture that God uses the things that we often reject. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you back here tomorrow as we continue to read through scripture together.